G'day. I bought a new vice the other day uh, for use on rotary tables and angle plates and all that sort of thing. And so I don't need to uh, do anything special for it. But one of the things that did make me think about was putting keys on the base. And so today's clip is a bit about keys, uh, where you'd use them, how you set them up, and uh, alternatives to them. One question which is occasionally asked is, how big a vice should I get for my mill? And the short answer is as big as possible. Uh, but there are a couple of provisos. One is you've got to be able to lift the thing, which means if you've got um, back problems or you haven't got any mechanical lifting aids, then a four or six inch vise is probably about as big as you're going to want to go. Once you start getting above that, the, the weights start going up quite significantly. The other issue is fitting the vise on your mill. In terms of um, how that works, This is the this is the problem. Okay, this is a four inch vise, and it fits on my mill. There's only about a finger width of difference between the back of the vise and the column of the mill. So, a bigger vise wouldn't do me any good here because I can't go back much further. The other thing is that this vise will open up to. around here. Now, I could possibly have a vise which would open an inch or so more, but it really wouldn't do me much good because if you look, there's the spindle there. So, you know, where I can cut sort of stops there. So in terms of this mill, which has got a, a nine inch table on it, this is probably about as big a vise as you'd want to go. And the same holds true for rotary tables as well. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting very close to the back there. This is an 8-inch rotary table. And even now, I can't use the locking lever on the rear because I'm that close to the, um, the, the column that it's interfering. So, and, and rotary tables are another one of these things that get really heavy um, the bigger you go. So my rule with rotary tables is you want one which is equal to or a little bit less than the width of your table. Uh, and for a vise, you need to look at the manufacturer's specifications, but you want something that will, when it's clamped to the, to the table, not protrude past the, the, the back of the table terribly much, uh, and open up enough that you can um, machine, but you don't want to open it opening excessively because that's just wasted space. The spindle can't get there. This vise came from eBay. Uh, it's a, an angle lock type style vise, which means that down in the base here there's a, a fork which acts on an inclined surface. There's actually a ball in there, acts on an inclined surface to pull that jaw down. Uh, jaw lift is one of the big problems you have because if the jaw lifts, then the part in the vise may lift, and so you're in, in a bit of strife there. However, one of the first things that uh, I'll be doing is actually removing the, the rotary base. And the reason for that is that apart from the wonderfully poor quality fittings used, that joint represents um, another place where things can flex, lack of rigidity. So unless you're one of these people who's using that, va that base all the time, uh, I would suggest take it off, Wrap it up in some uh, oil, wrap it up in some rags or something like that and put it somewhere where you can find it if you ever do need it. Uh, I've got a rotary base like this for my larger vise that I use and uh, I think I use it about once every three or four years. So, you know, they're not, they're not necessary, occasionally they do come in handy, but in terms of securing the vise down, this one, um, the, these, are, these are fine as they are. I guess one of the first questions is, when I talk about keys on a mill, what am I talking about? And these are them there, these are them here, whatever, okay. They're basically a piece of metal which fits in a slot on the base of the, of the vise or the dividing head or um, rotary table, whatever. 
it's it's screwed in and it's it's attached and then that width is just enough to fit in the the T slot there and what that does is that when you put it on it just sits in there why would you use them some people don't um, the reason you would use them is just that it makes putting the the uh, the piece of equipment quicker on the uh, the mill bed majority of times nine times out of ten um, I don't need to worry terribly much about alignment and so for me I have keys on there because I can just put the vice on there um, I can maybe do a couple of small checks but you know that's that's about it I don't have to worry too much about um, you know trying to, to train this up and all the rest of it you can you might not be able to see it very easily but here I've got I've got two punch marks then I've got two punch marks there occasionally you will want to take the keys off and so it's always a good idea to have them marked so you know which way they go in and which one goes on what side so that one's got two punch marks this one down here has got one punch mark and after punching those I've just run across with a file just to take the the, the raised bits out but at least then I can identify which key goes where and uh, make sure that they, they line up. As to how bad using keys can be, I've got a parallel set up. I'll run this across the length of the vise, which is four inches, and we'll have a look. So over four inches I've got, uh, what would that be, 0 0.12, 0 0.13 of a millimetre. Interestingly if I loosen the bolts off and I twist it that way, I get pretty much the opposite, um, opposite situation. So I'd say that the, the keys are pretty much spot on. Any, any movement is, is there just because you need some clearances. Point one three of a millimeter over four inches is uh, is probably good enough for for most people and if you wanted to you could with the keys on like this you could still trim that to uh, to suit so how does the method for uh, tramming up a vice work without having keys fitted well you could do it this way and just have a have an indicator set up wind it back and forth until you get you know the ends reading the same and do it that way but the way that I've seen uh, people like Tom Lipton do it from Ox Tools is basically winds it along and then taps it as it goes until the reading stays pretty much constant Now I'm nowhere near practiced on this method so I'm doing it rather slowly um, but to me the, the things that it would be key would be to make sure that the bolt on this side which is, uh, is snugged up is just at the right amount of friction so that it will allow turning without necessarily allowing any translation. This bolt over here is still loose and the idea would be that once you had that trammed up you then tighten that bolt, run a check, and, and everything would be wonderful. It does work. I've, I've used it myself, but as you can see, it takes a bit of time if you're if you're not familiar with it. How do the keys work? Well, basically, what you're looking for is something that will locate in that slot in the vise, attach with the the screw, and then will locate in here. Now, when I first did one of these. I got all excited because I thought, right, that's got to be a tight fit there, that's got to be a tight fit there, and that's got to be quite deep because the, the, the keys are, or the, the, sorry, the T-slot tops on the table are quite deep, and so I made the job a lot more complicated for myself than I needed to. What you really only have to worry about is getting a good tight fit in here. You don't have to worry about it being flush with that. This only needs to be five to ten millimeters deep and it also using this method needs to be wider okay 
So when you're making up your key, that's all you're worried about is basically that it's a, it's a snug fit in the, the slot on the vise and that the screw lines up. Now if you've got enough room, you put a countersunk screw in there, but you could use a socket head and counterboard or you could do all sorts of things really. The main thing is that it's it's a snug fit, it's secure. Okay, Because what you're going to do next is you're going to mount this in the vise and you're actually going to machine off the sides of those wings so that it fits the, the, the table. Most, most tables you'll find, well, if you have a new mill and you've looked after it, you're doing fine. You'll have a nice smooth surface, you'll have nice clean T-slots. If you've got a second hand little mill like mine, which has been around a bit, you'll probably find there's all sorts of nicks and dings, the tops of these are a bit rounded and all that sort of thing. And so what, what we're trying to do here is get it so that these bits are actually here, right? In in a portion of the of the T slot that's not going to be knocked around, chipped, banged, grooved, all that sort of thing. So basically we're going to be machining back till we get a nice snug fit here in our T slot. And that's how we do it. We're actually going to machine these on the vise and I'll show you that in a moment. But that will um, make sure that the vice jaws are lined up with the t with the the keys which are then lined up with the T slots on the on the table okay and that and that allows you to get quite reasonable alignment out of it this is the trick that helps you get your alignment right these vices have protruding jaws and so what you can cut, do is come down and clamp on the top of your T slots like so and then it's simply a matter of you can run your cutter along and that's why we wanted a bit of clearance over the bottom of the vise here so you don't have to worry about cutting grooves in your vise but you can then come along and machine that off do your careful measuring and machine the other side so you get a nice snug fit in there and you know because you've got these clamped to the vise and the vise is now clamped to the T-slot that way that these are going to be lined up with the T-slots and that's the trick and that's how you get these keys in in good alignment. For those who are a bit undecided there is a, there is a third option and that is a round pin like this and uh, I've just made it it's sort of a mushroom shaped thing uh, with a countersunk screw if you haven't got room for a countersunk screw because your T-slots are, are far narrow, you could just put a straight grub screw in there, uh, a long long one, uh, and, and secure it with some um, Loctite or something like that into a, into a bush, and that would do the job. But that acts as a pivot, and so that'll sit in the, in the T-slot and let the vise pivot as you gently tap on the, on the sides with a soft mallet, uh, and it saves the the problem of, of not quite having the tension right on your on your your T bolts and so therefore having the, the screw move laterally as well as, as pivot. So uh, that's just a, a, a third option. So that's a little bit about vices and fitting them to mills. I hope this has been of use to people and uh, thanks to those who uh, have helped me uh, out with information during my metalworking journey.